Here's more wrestling news for July 6, 2022. And we're starting this afternoon with Raw, which saw a vicious no-holds-barred match to close out the show. In the main event, Becky Lynch and Asuka continued their feud, this time with Lynch getting the win, but the two shared a moment after the bell. After Lynch got the win, both women squeezed the other, which in wrestling is done for wrestlers to check on each other without speaking out loud and breaking kayfabe. After Lynch grabbed Asuka to see if she was okay, the Empress grabbed Lynch, confirming that she was alright, and checking in on the former Raw Women's Champion. The brutal match saw tables, chairs, kendo sticks, and Asuka bring a trash can with her to the match, and while the pair tore each other apart in this incredible main event, it was great that they checked in with each other after the bell. The match was an epic way for Raw to go off the air, but the fans in attendance enjoyed a brief post-match segment involving Lynch. After the show, Lynch spoke to the crowd and called herself the greatest of all time. Given her championship accolades and WrestleMania showings, Lynch does have a lot of reason to call herself the GOAT, and it'll be interesting to see what comes next for her with her feud with Asuka tied at two wins each. It's been over a month now since MJF cut his infamous promo in which he bashed AEW and begged Tony Khan to fire him from the promotion. MJF has since been pulled from all promotional materials for the company, as well as being removed from their website, leaving fans to speculate what is a work and what is a shoot. One name who knows MJF all too well is his old henchman Wardlow, who spoke to the wrestling classic about his time with the salt of the earth. I'll just say this, he's not a good person, he really is a piece of shit. It was not enjoyable working with him, and he put me through more stress than anything and his behavior inside of the business and outside of the business is unacceptable, but that's all I'm going to say about that." When asked about MJF's infamous pipe bomb, Wardlow admitted that nobody knew in advance what was going to be said. Next question, nobody knows. I mean, for the most part, we all write our own promos. I mean, they just hand us microphones. We go out there and we say what we want. There's really no monitoring what we say when we go out there. There's no sign of MJF returning to TV anytime soon, as this story continues to blend reality and kayfabe, and who knows when, if ever, the Dynamite Diamond Ring winner will be back on our screens. We've got news from GCW now as the promotion is known for its violent death matches, but one recent bout went too far even by their standards. During a recent match, Hoodfoot and Slade faced off in a violent death match in which both men decided to use light tubes. After one particularly nasty spot though, Slade attempted to use a smashed light tube to stab Hoodfoot, resulting in his left arm being severely sliced open and the referee calling off the match. The referee had attempted to tape up Hoodfoot's arm but to no avail, and it's saying something that a death match had to be cut short due to the severe loss of blood. Hopefully both men are okay after this incredibly violent bout, and while death matches do have their fans, many see this kind of gore and bloodshed as too much for pro wrestling. This Saturday, the authors of Payne's new promotion wrestling entertainment series will host their debut show, which has come under criticism by fans. Despite Lena Fanin making it clear that she is no longer appearing at the show, the ex Nia Jax is still on the poster, but nothing seems to be moving tickets. According to a report by Daily Star journalist Adam Collier, the show has sold just 350 seats in the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham, England, a venue that can hold 10,000 fans. Several stars who have previously been promoted for the show have since been removed, including CJ Perry, Matthew Raywalt, the former Aiden English, and Adam Schur, who was supposed to be headlining the event. With fewer than 4% of the available seats selling, WES has a frankly insurmountable task ahead of this Saturday's show, so don't be surprised if this is the first and last show run by the struggling new promotion. At Money in the Bank, Liv Morgan had two of the biggest wins of her career, first winning the women's ladder match and later cashing in to become SmackDown Women's Champion. Dethroning Ronda Rousey, many felt this was a long time coming for Morgan, though not everyone is thrilled by the booking. Speaking on his Ref and Rant podcast, ex-WWE official Jimmy Corderas said it was a nice moment, but questioned some of the booking. It got the huge pop it wanted, but is it the way a babyface should win a championship and cash in their money in the bank? That's the only issue I had. Yes, the crowd did love it, but at the same time, babyfaces don't do it that way. 
Corderas suggested that Morgan would have been better off giving Rousey a heads up as to when she planned on cashing in to make it a fair fight. While faces have cashed in on faces before, as seen with Daniel Bryan, Kane, and CM Punk in 2009, all of them turned heels shortly after, and time will tell if Morgan befalls a similar fate as the new SmackDown Women's Champion. Money in the Bank also saw Shotzi compete in the women's ladder match, but not every spot she was involved in went exactly to plan. Given the match had seven superstars as well as ladders, it's hardly surprising things got a bit chaotic, but Shotzi faced several hateful messages from fans on social media. Many said that Shotzi had to be fired for one botched spot, and it's proven to be too much for the SmackDown superstar. While Shotzi's Instagram is still up, her Twitter account has been deactivated, as all the hateful messages from trolls proved to be too much for her. Hopefully Shotzi will be back on Twitter soon as she has a large fan base who want to support her, but for now, trolls have forced yet another wrestler from the social media platform. In 2020, Alexa Bliss aligned herself with Bray Wyatt, bringing in a much darker side to the former Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion. Bliss would eventually turn on Wyatt at WrestleMania 37, costing him his match with Randy Orton, and Wyatt was shockingly released the following July. Speaking on the Out of Character podcast this week, Bliss discussed working with the former Universal Champion and wishes things could be as they once were. Working with The Fiend with Wyndham was the most fun I've ever had in my entire WWE career. He is so brilliant with his creativity and he puts so much effort into his character, so much research. It made me want to step my game up 100% being like, okay, well he puts this much thought into his character, I need to put twice as much thought in mine. When you step into someone else's gimmick, you don't want to bring it down, you only want to elevate it. I put in so much effort into that and protecting the character and protecting when we did the Firefly Funhouse. It was so fun. Obviously, it's very sad that we don't work together anymore because it was so much fun, and I think the WWE Universe saw how much fun we were having. Bliss has faced criticism by some fans who believe she stole Wyatt's Fiend gimmick from him, a ridiculous notion given that she has no say on what WWE decide for her character. Wyatt himself has yet to appear for any other promotion, and while he has said he will wrestle again one day, Alexa Bliss wishes that his next match was in WWE. At Forbidden Door, Miro competed in a fatal four-way to crown the first AEW All-Atlantic Champion, but came up short on the night. Instead, it was Pac who was crowned champion, but Miro didn't appreciate what he saw on the rest of the card. Speaking to What Culture, Miro was asked about his views on the show and said that the main event wasn't exactly his cup of tea. John Moxley vs Hiroshi Tanahashi is beneath me, man. That's a secondary title. That's not what I care about. If I would have cared, I would have put myself in that battle royal. I would have won it all, and I would have gone for the interim championship. But until the real champion is back, that CM Punk guy that broke his foot or whatever he did, something broke in his body, until he comes back, I beat him for the title, then it wouldn't matter. I wasn't interested in charity titles. With no sign yet as to when Punk will be back, AEW may have to use the interim world championship for quite some time. But as far as Miro is concerned, he's got no interest in challenging for the charity title. With the interim AEW world title off his radar, Miro may want to try his hand at becoming the next AEW All-Atlantic champion, but Pac is busy defending the title, albeit not in AEW. It's been confirmed that Pac will defend his title against LJ Cleary at the upcoming OTT Poetry Slam event on July 22nd, which will take place in Dublin, Ireland. This marks Pac's first OTT appearance since August 2019, and we'll have to see if the Newcastle-born wrestler can keep the gold. Now, it's no secret that Taya Valkyrie and John Morrison are married in real life, but that doesn't stop them from settling their differences in the ring. During WrestleMania weekend, they competed over who had to do the dishes for the rest of their life, and now the happy couple are ready to throw down again. It's been confirmed by AAA that Valkyrie will team with Laredo Kid to face her husband, who is now going by Johnny Caballero, and his tag partner, Christy Janes. This match will go down at the Hard Rock Hotel on September 10th in what will be another night of not-so-happy wedded bliss for the real-life power couple. Back to WWE now as at Hell in a Cell, Cody Rhodes fought through a torn pectoral muscle to defeat Seth Rollins in the main event. Rhodes worked with a very gruesome-looking bruise on his body, and it proved to be too much for the wife of Diamond Dallas Page. 
On his Snake Pit podcast, GDP said that the violence of the match, especially given Rhodes' injury, was too much for his other half, who got up and walked away from the TV. WWE has said that Cody isn't expected back for another nine months, though several sources have suggested it will be far earlier than that, and whenever he comes back, expect a thunderous ovation for the American Nightmare. Rhodes wasn't at Money in the Bank, but one person who was was Bobby Lashley, who not only won the US title, but continued an impressive winning streak. With his win over Theory, Lashley has now gone several months without being pinned and is closing in on a year without being pinned to the mat. The last time Lashley was pinned was on the September 27th Raw where he lost to Big E, and in that time, some of WWE's top names, including Brock Lesnar, haven't been able to pin him. Lashley also went 4-0 at Money in the Bank events last weekend, and with a rematch against Theory set for SummerSlam, time will tell how long Lashley can keep his no-pinfall streak going. And we're ending today with AEW's Leva Bates, who has spoken about one of the most dangerous parts of wrestling, concussions. This week, Bates appeared on Thunder Rosa's YouTube channel and said that at least in her experience, temporary deafness is part of having a concussion. Bates said that when she suffers a particularly nasty concussion, that her ear canals swell up and she can be deaf for as long as 24 hours, no doubt a frightening experience. She added that she now deals with tinnitus, a constant ringing in her ears, and now needs a hearing aid to make the world around her louder than the ringing. While concussions were often overlooked in wrestling, the industry thankfully takes them more seriously now, but Leva Bates will have to deal with tinnitus for the rest of her days. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.